Here's a picture of the Titanic, a magnificent ship built in the early 1900s, and it was one of the largest and most luxurious ships ever built. And when they built it, they advertised it as being unsinkable. And they had taken some special precautions to make this ship extremely safe. Here's a diagram showing a cutaway view inside the Titanic. And the thing to notice are these walls inside the boat. And they go all the way from the stern all the way up to the bow. And they ran completely across the ship from one side to another. And they divided the ship into numerous compartments. And the idea was that, say, say this compartment, say there was a hole. Say something happened, there was an accident, and there was a hole in the boat here, and water started to pour in. Then water could fill into one compartment, but these walls would prevent the water from flowing out, flowing into the rest of the ship. Any doors in those, those walls, or bulkheads as they were called, or as they would be called, any doors in there were, were watertight, so the water would be confined to one compartment. And the ship was designed such that up to four of these compartments could flood with water, and it would still float. The problem was that these walls didn't go all the way to the top of the ship, like this. They didn't go all the way up. And when the ship hit an iceberg, it caused a separation in, in, places, in a seam in the metal and there was this gash along the side of the ship and water started pouring into I think five of these forward compartments. And as water poured in, the front of the ship got heavier and as the front of the ship sank down, water poured over one compartment and into the next and would fill that one up and then pour over into the next and fill that one up and in just a couple of hours the ship filled with water and it sank to the bottom. So this, this was a good design and a good safety feature but it wasn't good enough and it wasn't good enough for the ship to sustain the damage that it took when it struck the iceberg. And here's a famous painting of the ship going down and went down nose first and as the stern rose up into the air it actually snapped off. Um, the stress, it wasn't designed to, for the stern to be held up out of the water like that and the stern broke off and fell back into the water and then the stern itself sank. There were about two, over 2,000 people on board and most of them died and most of them did not drown. Most of them died from hypothermia in the cold water. And here's a picture of the actual iceberg that it struck. And remember that most of the iceberg here is below the surface, and the, the strike, the damage occurred below the surface, and that's why water poured in. And there's a picture of the Titanic on the ocean floor. They found it not too many years ago. It was, um, it was un, undiscovered. The, the wreckage was not found for a long, long time after it went down, because it's in deep water and cold water. It's not in a place that's easy to get to, but they finally found it, and they've actually salvaged some artifacts from the Titanic. In the movie Titanic, there's a scene in which Thomas Andrews, who was the head shipbuilder, he was in charge of building the ship, there's a scene in which he informs the captain and other important people on the boat about the damage that's been done to the ship by the iceberg. And one of the directors of the White Star Shipping Lines, Bruce Ismay, is in the room, and he, he turns around and he looks at him and he goes, but this ship can't sink. And Andrews, the shipbuilder, looks at him and says, she's made of iron, sir. I assure you she can, and she will. It's a mathematical certainty. It's a very sobering scene in the movie. There are a lot of sobering scenes in that movie, but there's the realization there that this ship is taking on water, and because it is made of iron, and it's going to take on water and will no longer displace enough water, that it is going to end up at the bottom of the ocean. And it's, it's just really gripping to watch that movie and some of those scenes in particular and to realize that it's not just a movie, it's not just fiction, that this actually happened.